OK, it's all yours. OK, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining the April 5th, 2022 GBOS special meeting, HLB annual work plan and five year management program agenda draft is what I'm reading. That's call to order 7.03 PM. The Gerwood Board of Supervisors, its committees and subcommittees are subject to the Alaska Open Meetings Act as found in Alaska Statute 44.62.310 and Anchorage Municipal Code 1.25 Public Meetings. The Gerwood Board of Supervisors operates under the Gerwood Public Meetings Standards of Conduct. Call to order at 7.03. I am Brianna Sullivan, co-chair, Parks and Recreation and Cemetery Supervisor. So we'll start with the roll call after me, Mike. Uh, Mike Edgington, co-chair, land use supervisor. Jennifer. Haven't seen her yet. OK, I thought I lost something here too. Uh, Amanda. <clears throat> Amanda Sassy, Rhodes and utility supervisor. Thank you. Guy? Guy Wade, Fire Department Supervisor. Thank you, Guy. And for the record, we'll all look for when Jennifer joins. She just did. Oh, she just did. Jennifer, if you're there, could you roll call for us, please? Sure. Jennifer Wingard, Public Safety Supervisor. Thank you. Does anyone have any disclosure tonight? Hearing none, I will go on to the agenda revisions and approval. April 5th special meeting regarding the HLB annual work plan and five year management plan program agenda approval. Are there any revisions? Mike? I was actually going to um, move to approve and then move to amend, but I'll uh, move to approve first. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second, Ms. Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. And Mike. OK, so now I'll move to amend the um, the amendment is I would like to consider adding one more item to the tonight's agenda. Um, we previously discussed the reapportionment within Anchorage and um, the sense was that the original one of the original plans which had Girdwood and Eagle River joined together was uh, very much not supported. Um, by this body and we sense the and we believe the community as a whole. Um, there is a review of the Alaska state level um, redistricting plan and uh, one of the proposals, one of the three proposals they're considering is to join uh, Eagle River and Girdwood Turnigan Arm um, in a single Senate seat. So since this is so similar to something we uh, rejected and took an official position on before, um, I'm wondering if we can review that and potentially take a, an official position tonight. So that would be item three. Um, look briefly at the um, the state redistricting proposals. Okay, thank you, Mike. Is there a second for the amendment? I'll second the amendment. This is Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. Any objections? Okay. For the amended agenda, we will begin with announcements. The public is encouraged to ask questions and provide comment. Please raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. To help discussions stay productive, please direct your comments to the board rather than other members of the public and keep your comments focused on the business under discussion. Please be respectful of everyone's opinions. The HLB draft 2022 annual work program and five-year management plan are being prepared and draft is available to review online at the link provided. Agenda number one on our agenda is to review the official comment to provide HLB on the proposed revised HLB annual work plan and five-year management program prior to the April 8th deadline. So uh, we have it here on, uh, we do not have it here. Sorry, I'm just going back to another screen. I know that a lot of work happened at the last meeting and pretty much got through 
most of chapter four in the document. So we need to just come up with our formal um, statement to submit by the 8th. Mike, go ahead, please. OK, so I drafted a <clears throat> I thought this is this makes more sense as a letter than a resolution. Um, so I drafted a letter which contains some of the main points, um, but by no means all of the detail. Um, I thought maybe the right thing to do was to make our main points in time for April the 8th. Um, so it gets in front of the because these are kind of things that might change bigger chunks of the uh, plan um, and get those in front of the HLP Advisory Commission in, uh, in the formal response. Um, and then as it goes through the process, we can then add more detailed responses, which we can then incorporate anything that comes from trails or um, or land use as well into that more detailed response. So the letter basically says this is a this is a first set of concerns. Uh, more details coming will come along later. And that every I think everyone on the board should have that document. Um, I sent it around just before the meeting. We can put that up on the screen. Thank you, Mike. Guy, go ahead. I don't hear you yet, Guy. Oh yeah, okay. Y yes, hear you now. Yeah, I I read the the letter and I, I agree with the approach. Um, can you remind me again? Um, and probably some others on the call. These. What we're submitting before the eighth will appear in their final document, but there's you were saying as we revise these these revisions or if we add to this will not be in the appendix of the plan. Is that correct? Or no. will they continue to consider what we talked about now today and revisions to them in the appendix of the plan? Yeah, my understanding is that if any comments which are received by this Friday uh, will get incorporated into one of the appendices and will that document, including the appendix, that appendix will be presented to the HLB Advisory Commission. They will also receive any comments which arrive later, but the, any comments which arrive by the end of the day Friday will be part of the document itself. Um, so again, what I thought we should do is put the sort of big comments um, and get them in this week, and then we have a set of much more detailed comments on specific details. Uh, which we can then subsequently um, incorporate. Uh, we can respond with those comments and incorporate anything specific that comes back from land use or uh, trails. So we have a little bit longer to do that. We should still be able to get that in front of the um, in front of the HLB Advisory Commission or definitely in front of the Assembly. Because if it passes HLB Advisory Commission, it will then go on to the Assembly. Excellent. OK, I appreciate that clarification. Thanks. So if we have questions or anything to add to this draft, um, is there any other opportunity to do it, Mike, or is it right now? Um, since it's a letter rather than a resolution, um, we can probably make sort of, you know, scrivenous changes um, mm -hmm. after today, but I think it makes sense to go through this, make sure it incorporates the things we wanted to incorporate uh, for the first set of uh, comments uh, and then vote on it tonight. OK, great. Jennifer, go ahead, please. Thanks. Um, was hoping we, we could talk process a little bit here. It was my understanding, and in fact, I know it was stated at the last meeting that there was going to be some uh, coordination on this, and I don't know if there was. I understood that I was going to be a part of it for some of my concerns, and I certainly wasn't. So seeing this just nine minutes before the meeting is a little tough to process, but I can say this right off the bat. Uh, I don't think it represents the conversation that I was there for for the other two meetings, and it certainly doesn't represent my main concerns or what I think are the most important concerns about the HLB plan. We have two and a half pages of wading into the natural space argument and one paragraph that might address the Holton Hill situation. So I don't know if for me personally, I don't want to start by revising this draft. 
I don't the, I don't like this draft at all. I completely disagree with this. OK, the reason. Um, looking at the way that the Open Meetings Act is written, um, even doing sequential discussions with different individuals uh, appeared to be at least a violation of the spirit. So the right way to do this is we had the we had two meetings. This is at least a version of a summary of those. And by all means, there should be more in there. There should be changes in places. That's the point of this meeting to change it. Um, that seemed like a, um, a much more uh, con con consistent and uh, appropriate method of doing it than have uh, a bunch of sequential or uh, several sequential discussions. Well, I'm, I'm totally open to that, but I don't want to start with this draft. I would like us to write our own what we think is most important, but the idea of starting with one person's preset draft of what was most important, especially when it looks to me like it was almost a different conversation than the one I sat in on, but also not necessarily reflective of the most important, most time pressing concerns. I want to start from scratch. I don't want to start from this. OK, thank you, Jennifer and Mike. And I know that our the minutes from the meeting were. Were really well. Um, were thoroughly written and then putting it into a letter form would be a lot of work for. A collective board, but we cannot really do that. Um, without a meeting. So I'm not sure where to go from here. But I do know that, or I hope that because HLB is taking public hearing as individuals, we could write something that we feel is really important as community members, but then what comes from GBOS uh, would be separate. So in case that would help at all, but. Um, mm. Anyone else have thoughts on this? Mike? I'd be very interested in what the board feels is missing and what the board feels uh, shouldn't be there, or individuals on the board, I should say. Okay. Thanks. I've read thoroughly through the minutes, but I have not read this document yet. So, um, Guy, your hand was, go ahead, Guy. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> we're here, you know, mm -hmm. and let's, um, if there's some items on here that aren't, that we need to exp expand on, you know, or add, I think this is the this is the time to do it. I don't know if we need to totally, you know, I agree with with most of these points, but uh, you know, if um, let's work through it, you know, if got a good introduction, I think, and there's some good points in here, but why don't we try to if this is the process that we have to go through um, during a public meeting, then I think we um, I think we take what we have here and um, and work with it. Let's work through it, OK? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Guy. Amanda? I was uh, looking at the document because I didn't see it before the meeting. Um, and I think that it, I don't think we're going to be able to write something tonight if we started from scratch and would like to see us amend uh, what was already started by Mike. Thank you for doing that, Mike. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Jennifer, your hand and then Mike. Well, I'm sorry to just disagree with my fellow board members here, but I would have liked at the very least for the board to put forward what they thought our priorities are rather than working from a preset document. There is another way to do this. And we can just right here right now say, here's what matters the most out of our discussions and here's what we want to address with HLB. But <laughs> starting with this, um, 
is starting with one person forming the conversation. So I, I actually really disagree that this is the best interpretation of the, both the Open Meetings Act and a way in which to get general consensus. I don't think the best way to get general consensus is to start out with one person's synopsis. And um, in particular, the tone of this is really problematic for me. I feel like we're kind of taking HLB on in a way that's not necessarily going to suit anybody's purposes at all. But going in and kind of micromanaging this retroactively uh, is, I think, taking the long, arduous approach rather than, hey, what do we think matters the most? Let's get it down. Let's go with it. Mike? So as a particular concrete proposal, uh, I think we should include the minutes as uh, effectively an addition to this uh, letter. So at the end of the letter, include the minutes from both of the work sessions. And then we have that record as part of this document. Thank you. I am in agreeing. I agree with putting the minutes uh, in this submission. Um, and I think all the quotes uh, from what I'm reading right now that you've put are exactly what was in the plan and then what the board was discussing and was in the minutes right after each subject line. So. Could I, could yep. I just have one more response as well? I'd like to uh, respond to uh, Jennifer's comment about the tone. I think the, um, I think the tone of the original plan was, uh, pretty aggressive and dismissive of the community. Um, and that definitely came through in our discussions um, in both work sessions. I think a recognition that the plan uh, had that sense and tone. I feel this is, if anything, understated relative to the plan language itself. Um, but uh, I do not feel it's appropriate for us, given that we represent the community, we were elected to represent the community, that we should uh, we should just sort of accept the except the way the HLB plan was effectively dismissive of uh, Goodwood public process and the Goodwood community. I don't think it's appropriate to uh, to just ignore that and not respond in an appropriate way. And I feel this is reasonably appropriate. I mean, obviously I have a bias because I, you know, I went through, this is a second revision. Um, and I do appreciate, I know this is missing a lot of material that we discussed. Um, so I'd really want to, I want to hear what is missing. But I would support. I personally would support the uh, support the tone in this letter. Thank you, Mike. Well, well I hope so. Since you wrote it, Mike. Um, Jennifer, since the the bottom of this letter begins with the Holton Hills, would you like to add uh, something right now to the end of it? Or more right, from so the minute. Uh, once again, a couple of things about this. And, you know, look, guys, <laughs> I don't want to give anyone a hard time, but I had all of nine minutes to review this. In fact, that's why I was a little bit late for the meeting. So, and I know, in fact, that if Open Meeting Acts was complied with, then nobody else besides Mike had more than nine minutes for this. So, in all fairness, it might take a little bit of time to set in. But I can tell you one thing that jumps out at me with Holton Hills here is that I actually think it is the most important thing in the entire HLB plan for the sake of the community. The most, the thing that's going to affect us the most by far is what happens on Holton Hills. And so far, we've given it kind of one paragraph. I thought I remembered a lengthy discussion about understanding where some of the Holton Hills priorities came from, including referring back to the plan itself. We had a long discussion about the site-specific land use studies. Uh, it was on page six and the kind of things that HLB was gonna take into consideration. And the idea was let's include the impact on our housing breakdown, all of our housing needs, and in particular, the impact on workforce housing. And none of that discussion is in here. Um, except it says, well, there's no specific specific linkage to residential housing. Had I been part of writing this or 
better yet, another way to have approached this was to have let individuals write the sections that they were most interested in. And for me, it was housing. I would have said, I understand where HLB has come from in, in the past. I understand why this hasn't historically been a concern. And I think a very good argument, including recent uh, muni and developer arrangements, I think a very good argument can be made that we should insert it now and that that actually would give HLB freedom to take it into consideration, whereas in the past that would just be kind of public pressure, but not part of the list of things. I think there's easy to make an argument that our, the effect on our housing is every bit as important as our effect on roads, parks, trails, schools, status polite, blah, blah, blah. So I would have started it that way rather than throwing in a paragraph at the end that makes Holton Hills look like a secondary concern to the rat's nest of our natural space conversation within the, the community right now. Can I, I'd like to respond to that if that's okay. Brianna? Oh, sorry, I've been talking. Go ahead, Mike. No, I agree. It's, that's a, a that's about relative priorities and where the um, where the general concerns versus the specific concerns about that project fall. I think that's a completely valid um, comment, completely valid criticism. I don't have any problem at all with uh, expanding on the um, expanding on the the specific concerns we had about Holton Hills. I thought that would be something which would come up uh, later in a sub sub, sub su sorry in a subsequent um, set of responses. But uh, I agree, it's probably the most important thing we're facing. So why not go into more detail and put it at the beginning? I think that's a completely valid point. Thank you for bringing that up, Jennifer. Thank you. And I think what I was saying to no one on mute was that I thought it was listed last because it was discussed in that order because we went through the plan in order the way it was um, published. Um, we have two members of the public with their hands up. Uh, are there any other comments from the board before I go to them? Okay, Brendan, your hand was up. Hi, thanks. Yeah, um, I mean, I'd love to make comments on the substance of this right now, but, um, you know, I've seen some of it flying before my eyes and obviously I've read the the minutes um, from the previous meetings, but you know, I would point out in addition to the fact that apparently supervisors had nine minutes to review this document prior, um, which is obviously a build out of bullet points um, that the public has had zero minutes. Um, so if you're, you know, representing the community, it's kind of hard to do that when the community can't even read it and uh, distill it and then provide you comments which you would then be representing thanks brendan kaylee you're still muted katie or kaylee sorry Uh, well, I don't know if her hand's really up, but I still have Kaylee as muted. Is there anyone else that has anything to add? Uh, Shannon? Hi, thank you. I was just going to clarify. Are you, are you, um, is the plan to read it section by section um, for the public to be able to see it as well? We could uh, a lot of yeah, it is like the previous speaker uh, mentioned. It's like bullet points from our minutes and then bits of the plan quoted. So if that's what uh, we need to do, we could start from the very beginning. Um, but I do know that a few of the board members spoke up saying that they were fine with it. Uh, I'm having a hard time scrolling, so I can go back to the draft. Okay. 
Guy? Your hand is up. Guy, you're muted if you're. Yeah, again, we're all here and, the, and there's some of the public here. And if we're not happy at the end of this meeting, we don't have to. Um, there's nothing forcing this to force this document in, in into you know the appendices of the plan. So um, I don't know. It seems like it, it's going to be hard to you know how these things go. We will. Um, I can't imagine getting this done tonight and everybody being pleased with the document, but. Um, if we want to make an honest effort, try to get some of the appendices, we could, you know, begin the process. Um, if we need to move Holton Hills to the top as a, as a, you know, a high interest topic and go from there. But it, okay. and then at the end of the day, if we don't, if we don't um, agree with it, we don't have to, you know, vote to pass it. And but it, yeah, the you know, it'd be tough for the public to really read this word by word and everybody get there. Um, be happy with what, what the letter says by the end of our meeting. So but I, I, I'm up for trying to work through the process and, and get done what we can while we're here. And if we're not happy with it, we don't okay. have to go forward with it. Thanks, Guy. And I was just going to ask Mike if. Um, but you have your hand up, so Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to suggest that we take the um... We start off by taking the section on Holden Hills, put an appropriate part for appropriate sentence beforehand, bring that to the beginning of the, the document after the introduction, um, and then uh, supplement it with the bullet points, which are in page two of the uh, minutes from, I believe, the second meeting, the 29th, yes. And then we can perhaps take that, take that and expand and turn them into sentences. OK. Um, I can read the Holton Hills paragraph that's there right now so everyone can hear it. It says, Holton Hills, GBOS has a fundamental concern that the basis for the original RFP was to provide residential housing that met the needs of the Girdwood community, yet the project as currently proposed is for land developmental alone with no specific linkage to residential housing. Specifically, there's no public information on how any resultant housing would meet the needs of current and future Girdwood residents rather than non-resident second home owners. And yes, the minutes had a lot more on this. Um, so if we added something from page two. Yep. Yep. I think the minutes addresses four specific things and that paragraph addresses maybe one and a half out of those four. So I agree it would be better if it was expanded. And I also agree it's the most important thing facing us. So I don't know. I think it's reasonable to put that to the front of the document. OK. If we added, Guy, go ahead. My bad. OK. So if we added those four points, that are stated as they are in the minutes and then an opening sentence, um, plus like a, a note to say to refer to the minutes for, for more details for this first so written document to HLB, would that suffice? Because in three or four weeks, there would be more opportunity to, to comment, just wouldn't be in the appendix. Jennifer, do you have a uh, thought? Oh yeah. yeah, my hand was popping up. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> um, the yeah, okay. I think I think that's good. Um, I think I think that's good. If I'm, I have what I think are the four points. Could you maybe reiterate them for the people that are online or not able to um, see a draft of that right now? So I have the minutes in front of me, uh, but I don't know which exact points they would be 
So, Mike, do you have them? It, I was re I was looking at the section on page two of the minutes from the 29th of March. Mm -hmm. About halfway down, there are four bullet points. Oh, well, yeah, those four bullet points. OK, it says the following areas are seen as points to address. Lack of recent land use study, i.e. none in the last five to ten years. Second point, no guarantee of any housing. Definitely no guarantee of the type of housing the community is expressing need for. This is inconsistent with original RFP scope. Third point, need for an updated study based on recent changes to housing market. It is necessary to study impacts on workforce housing if this project goes forward. Fourth point, trail buffers. Community members have expressed concern about maintaining trail buffers and the character of the trails that are adjacent to the development. So those are complete sentences and bullet points. And they're, yeah, they're on this screen now. Uh, Mike? Yes, I think to some extent, I to, uh, the first and the third bullet points overlap a little bit, and the paragraph in the draft letter really addresses mostly um, the second bullet point and then a little bit of the third. So I think if we take the, um, the need for an updated study, et cetera, the third bullet point, put that at the beginning of the section on Holton Hills, expand that perhaps a little bit, and then add the comment about trail buffers at the end after that paragraph, then we have three paragraphs on Holton Hills. That can go near the beginning of the letter. OK. Jennifer? That sounds good. I wanted to add uh, possibly a precursor paragraph or some mention again of um, the issue from page six of work um, impact on overall housing market. And again here, um, Mike, I'm thinking like in the Imagine Girdwood meeting when we had the, the rainbow of housing needs that I would like it if there is some way that we could address that any development, especially any develop, major development, like for example, something with 270 units should include an analysis of what if any sections of the rainbow are being met besides the forest green one. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm wondering if this is the right place for that level of detail or whether that should that should be in our, um, we should provide a response um, to the project proposal itself when it comes in front of HLB in May or maybe June. Um, I'm wondering if that might be a better place for going to that level of detail and focusing just on the Halton Hills project. OK, so can I, I, I can about see that? arguments in both directions. Right. So I was imagining something that comes before Holton Hills as a sublet that we would encourage work. Uh, we would encourage housing analysis to be done as part of any site specific land use study prior to land disbursement. And it, that it's that would be that simple. It could be that one sentence that it's such a crisis in Girdwood that I think it's an easy argument to make that our community would like impact on housing to be considered before land is dispersed by HLB. That sounds great. The sentence you said, Jennifer, sounded great. Okay. Well, I can't say it again, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we record the meetings. If we start with that sentence and then the edits that were just stated, um, does that give us a good start? As in, I'm calling this a start because we'll have something different maybe in a few weeks, but this will be for Friday's deadline. Okay, I don't see any hands up, which is okay because I know it's a lot of button clicking to put your hand up, so it's okay to just speak up, board members. I think it's a good start. Okay. Uh, and then after that in the minutes was Winter Creek hand tram, but we are we OK to go back to the beginning? And I could read through. Is that still what we'd like to do in use of time? Let's see. So the opening paragraph is explaining like an introduction of who we are and we represent the taxpayers of the Girded Valley Service Area. I can 
click the right things. Dear HLB staff, regarding the GBOS initial comments on the draft 2022 Heritage Land Bank Annual Work Program and Five-Year Management Plan. The Gerber Board of Supervisors is the duly elected Anchorage Municipal Board representing the residents and taxpayers of Girdwood Valley Service Area in the provision of multiple local services, including parks and recreation, and is also recognized under AMC 22.40.035 as representing Girdwood in an equivalent capacity as a community council. The Heritage Land Bank is the largest land owner within the Girdwood Valley service area, and GBOS appreciates the close working relationship forged between the two bodies over the years on multiple critical projects while recognizing that each entity has a distinct role within the broader municipality. Specifically, GBOS represents the community of Girdwood, whereas HLB has responsibility to the interests of citizens across the whole municipality and to its own financial interests as a non-tax funded body. This letter includes GBOS's initial comments to be included in Appendix G of the work plan ahead of consideration at the HLB Advisory Commission meeting of April 28th. It represents the outcome of detailed consideration of the HLB work plan at GBOS work sessions on March 16th, 2022 and March 29th, 2022, and a GBOS special meeting of April 5th, 2022, where the board voted blank blank against to provide these comments. Uh, GBOS may have additional comments to be presented later in the process before assembly action. Any comments from all that? I think it's great. I think it's great. OK. Um, general, we started with GBOS was surprised by several sections of the document which indicate at best and ambivalence and at worst an unwillingness to accept the outcome of the Girdwood public process or a lack of intent to respect plans emerging from the community. Specifically, uh, the first bullet point is closure of HLB land on page 17. While GBOS acknowledges that HLB as the landowner of record has the right to close land as they see fit, Almost all land HLB holds in Girdwood is part of the broader natural recreational resources of the community. A narrow assertion of HLB ownership and the threat of land closure is in conflict, conflict with both the goal of managing land as an asset to the wider community and a threat to the basic economic driver of Girdwood as a recreational community. This is perhaps a timely reminder that either an open public access agreement should be reached for the bulk of HLB land in Girdwood or a transfer to a municipal entity that has expertise and focus on recreational land management. Any comments on closure of HLB land? Uh, Guy. It might be worth including a, you know, a, a sentence in there about <clears throat> opening up their that process to the public. Um, open, you know, yeah, just being more transparent on on their decisions um, during this pro process. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. You're still muted. There nope. you go. Um, it was sorry. I was thinking you can't smell the smoke on your end. Um, <laughs> I uh, actually I wanted to back up and kind of address the general statement beforehand, which thank you uh, is stronger than uh, uh, me personally. I'm comfortable with. I think we could say just um, I if people are open to it, maybe we could tone that down just a notch and say GBOS was surprised by several sections of the document and our concerns are listed below. Um, I don't I don't know that I want to accuse HLB of ambivalence or unwillingness. <clears throat> uh, and in all fairness, I have a little bit of a point about some of this stuff because in the trails meetings I've attended, there hasn't always been consideration of who the landowner is. And so 
it seems to me like there has been a little bit of an oversight here that there are a lot of plans being made as if that land was owned by Girdwood. And I know that that is how we see it, but I wonder if we could cut HLB just a little bit of slack. So what, what I'm hearing is we could, would you like to take out the words best and worst and then um, somewhere in there say acknowledge the Girdwood public process to respect plans emerging from the community? Those are my first two thoughts, but Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to address the, the second part, not so much the first paragraph. So the thing that came up in our discussions around was not about um, how it's being discussed in the trails plan. It was about we were discussing um, the overall ownership of land versus the use of the land and the importance of the land to Girdwood's economic to economic, uh, you know, imperatives, I guess, the drivers for econ the economy here. Um, so it was really addressing the question of why LHLB can close the land, the very fact that they can do so independently of what the community wishes or the needs of the community is a concern and maybe should become a topic for additional considerations such as um, having open access agreements or indeed changing ownership of the land or management responsibility of the land. So it was a, it was actually bringing out a broader point than has been discussed in the trails. I agree that's not something that's been discussed in trails meetings, um, but it's something I think we as a as a, an overarching body should be considering and should be thinking about. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I agree. And we have another hand. Brendan? Actually, go ahead, Mike. Sorry, I don't want to I'll let Brendan speak and then I'll uh, make, I'm just going to go back to the first sentence, but I'll let okay. Brendan go first. Okay, go ahead, Brendan. Um, again, with the caveat that I can't see the document below this, so I can't sort of situate this within the entire context of the comment, but just to the to the general point, you know, speaking as a uh, the you know the top level statement, speaking as a resident, I would say that's certainly not reflective of of how I would like such a comment letter to be presented to HLB um, along the lines of what Jennifer was saying. Um, you know, I, I can't speak to whether or not um, the HLB work plan does what is said here, you know, at best and at worst, but um, I can say that I would be supportive of any body, including HLB, casting a critical eye on the quality of local planning processes, um, in, especially in the context of them meeting their own mandates. Um, and in particular in Girdwood, I've been involved in a number of those processes which highly warrant such scrutiny. Um, and so, um, and they include at least the trails plan, which I did see there in the bullet below, and I don't know what else is below that further. So um, I guess that's, that's what I would say. Thanks, Brendan. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I'll address the, uh, the sentence at the beginning of that. I, I'm. I'm fine. It was uh, less harsh than what I originally wrote, so um, I'm fine with uh, making it a, a slightly more bland statement. So if we have GBF surprise several sections of the document, um, uh, I think the ambivalence and unwillingness are probably not the right terms. Um, I'm trying to think of something which would reflect something in between uh, that still expresses why we're, we're surprised at. Because I think we all, again, in the in the you know, four or five hours we had to discuss this uh, theme that kept coming up and over and again was the the tone of the HLB plan. Um, so I think it's important we reflect that somehow. So I'm not quite sure what the right terminology should be here. I mean, it definitely, it definitely, the plan definitely says in a number of places that they kind of don't care what good would want and what our plans say. They're going to do their own stuff, do their own things, and that does not seem appropriate. I mean, they actually elsewhere say they they should reflect they should reflect plans they're meant to as a municipal body, and they have plenty of opportunity. They have multiple opportunities to uh, to comment on the plans, both as representative representatives of the effectively through the public process, but also they get special rights as a municipal department to uh, comment on the plans. Thank you, Mike. Jennifer. 
I, I don't know whether to address the um, my comments to Mike or through the chair or whatever, but um, Mike, I wonder if um, some of that, this sentence I think is actually implied by some of our concerns and the bullet points below. So maybe, maybe in a way we could say it goes without saying, because as I look through the bullet points below, we've uh, come out pretty strongly about those. So it, what about the possibility of letting them speak for themselves? Like again, something like GBOS was surprised by several sections of the document as outlined below. And then within each of these bullet points, uh, you've there are listed the specific issues, um, like the one about uh, HLB land and not having uh, a vote in how they manage it. And I, I think I think you have it implied. Are, are you open to that possibility? It, it's definitely implied. I wonder if the, I I think it comes across clearer if it's a, if there's a clear statement at the beginning. But uh, I agree that I think the GBS surprised that several uh, sections of the document is fair up to that point. I would say the rest of the words up to the comma perhaps should be replaced and then accept the outcome, go to public process, etc. for probably stay. But we should just have something which is uh, slightly more neutral. Uh, Thank which, you. Uh, my, that sounds great. And thanks, Jennifer, too, because I I would just like to point out that when we all read documents, sometimes the opening sentence gets more attention than the lower parts. And to us, this makes sense. But to someone in Anchorage, this might not resonate or be become clear as it does to us. So I, saying something I, twice is OK. Mike, I don't mean to jump into other, I know other people have the hands up, but I have a I just thought about and I have a concrete suggestion. So if we replace that first sentence with uh, GBS is surprised by several sections of the document, um, then which raise a question about HLV's acceptance of the outcome of the good public process, etc. I, I like I, that better. OK. Good. Anyone else? OK, I think everyone likes it. <laughs> Uh, and then we have we have a couple of comments about the, the closure of HLB land um, that are on the record. And I'm not sure what else we have to add about that. Mm. So before we go to the next bullet point, uh, Shannon, I'll go. Thank you. Um, I had a comment on the closure of HLB land. Um, I'm in agreement, of course, that I don't want HLB land closed, um, but at the same time, the threat is due to misuse, such as snow machining or damaging of wetlands. And so I wonder if um, rather than saying, well, rather than close it because people have misused it, you should give it to us. Maybe talk about instead of closing it, educating the people, because I think that there are some people in Girdwood who don't understand um, the rules of some of the land areas that you know, are ours or aren't ours. So I just feel cautious because I feel like if we push too hard on some things, then we'll get the opposite reaction. Thank you, Shannon. John, you have your hand up. John McKenzie, you're muted. Um, I have the wrong name on my, this is Jerry. <laughs> I've just realized this. I had let a friend of mine use my computer. Um, I was wondering why well, his name's on there. Anyways, this, I apologize. What, you know, where, where the statement says GBS was surprised, what if it said GBS was concerned? And then say GBS was concerned about the lack of Girdwood public process or intent to respect the plan, something like GBS was concerned by HLB not um, listening to Girdwood public process or in something like that. Rather than surprise, concern sounds better to me. And I'll change my name, thanks. Thank you, Jerry. Well, at least it starts with a J, it's okay. Uh, Mike. Ironically, I had concerned and then I changed to surprise because I thought concerned was too strong. But I'll, I'm happy with either. Okay. Jennifer. 
Not to micromanage this, but yeah, I like concerned. Okay, I also like concerned. Uh, let's see, and then Sorry, we, just, I, go ahead, Mike. Just for a pro, from a process point of view, I'm taking I'm taking notes and changing a version of the document, um, and there will be track changes on that, so I can share that later in the meeting. Okay, great. And then for so far on the closure of HLB land, we've basically address the need for a public process or requesting the HLB involve Girdwood before closing something or putting up signs or educating the public. So, um, Guy? Yeah, I hate to go back to the general, but if that's going to set the tone for the letter, maybe we should mention that we would appreciate a more open process you know, a sentence in there that, you know, more open process of, of <clears throat> would benefit the community, something in that kind of first statement to um, remind HLB that, you know, that I think that's a big reason, um, a big part of, you know, that causes these issues are, is everybody's kind of in the dark on a lot of this, so, um, or, you know, a lot of decisions are made without our input, so, um, it might be worth adding a sentence there to kind of set the tone. Thank you, Guy. Yeah, that would help preface the, the next bullet point too for closure of land. A statement about that. Okay, I kept going back and forth between those two because I didn't break them up the first time. Are we okay to move to the next bullet point? Even though I see hands up, you can still say something. Okay. I'll go ahead and read the way it's written in this, and in, it's in the plan written like this. Girdwood Trails and Natural Space Plan, page 17. The text indicates the HLB has grave concerns about some of the proposed projects and will provide a detailed staff report to HLBAC. There was an opportunity for formal feedback during the earlier public comment period on the earlier draft plan, and that opportunity will be provided again in any future draft plans. We encourage HLB staff to productively engage in the development of the plan through the public process. This would be best for all parties. So does that make sense? Mike? Uh, well, I knew what I meant. The, um, so the issue here is that HLB say in the plan that um, they're concerned about much of it and they're going to report back completely independently of the plan and they're not necessarily, in, and they had another comment about they've diseng they're somewhat disengaged with the plan. Um, and I think that is the wrong approach. The right approach is for them to stay engaged in the plan. And again, they have multiple opportunities to do so. So that's the point of the paragraph. Got it. Brendan. Hi, yes. Um, I would say I disagree with this bullet being in here. Um, uh, first, it surprises me, um, you know, regardless of HLB's current status of participation in the plan, um, anyone who followed the process would have known that HLB was regularly involved in the trails plan process. Um, and also I would just point out that they have their own mandate and, uh, you know, uh, good for them for following it. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the actual okay. quote from the quote from the HLB document is HLB a step back from the plan, so they're not engaged in it and they say they're not engaged in it. So I think that that's not quite what uh, that doesn't represent. I don't think Brendan represented the reality of the situation now in his comments. Thank you, Mike. Crystal. Or indeed HLB's impression of the reality. Mm hmm. I read that part of the plan and that they were stepping back and not taking part of trails um, to mean that, you know, they weren't in, in, engaging currently, 
And what I believe I have recognized is the pattern is that when the RFP discussions began is when HLB started disappearing from Girdwood's public meetings. And I bet that that could be documented and verified by looking at attendance reports. Uh, but that is the theme that I personally noticed. And so we should maybe go back and look at the minutes and see when the last time the HLB was represented at both trails plan and for sure housing plan, housing committee. Thanks, Crystal. Brendan, your hand is up. Yeah, thanks. I just want to point out that I would definitely appreciate not being misrepresented um, by Mike. In my comments, I clearly stated that uh, while my comments had nothing to do with what their current status of engagement was, that they had been involved extensively in the trails plan process in the fact in the past, and that's clearly what I said. OK, so I think in that case, the the relevant section here stands that we're talking about uh, their future behavior, not what they were doing a year or two in the past. OK, do we need to add Jennifer? Go ahead. Uh, this this bullet point is is giving me pause because um, I think, you know, in all again, just plain devil's advocate, much as I hate to do it for HLB, the trails meetings got a little hairy there with. Uh, it would have been a part time job. Uh, in addition to their their full time job with HLB to attend all those meetings, particularly like in the uh, early part of this year. Um, and I think also that they they can make an argument of having felt sidelined and then at some point choosing to be sidelined. So calling them out for somehow or another actively choosing to walk out and slam the door behind them isn't exactly what I saw. So again, I, I worry about the tone of this. I think I think we can do better and uh, and still hold them. And, and and still make a statement about we want to have say in what happens to our land. Like we can we can still object to the language of this report or work plan. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, I, it may not come across this way, but the the intent of this paragraph is not to talk about their engagement in the general meetings. Is to talk about uh, their engagement both in the uh, public comment periods. Um, when the first draft is released and presumably if another draft is released um, and also that they have a they have the opportunity to um, uh, to comment during their actually no isn't there sorry they also have the opportunity to uh, to comment during the um, assembly adoption as well in a, they have a privileged position to do so during that process It wasn't specifically about attending meetings because I agree there are many, many meetings and it would probably un be unreasonable for them to attend all. Well, uh, Mike, what about striking just the last sentence? For me, that would help a little bit with tone. You mean this would be best for both parties? That's fine. Yes, yeah, that's it. That's a That's an editorial comment. It's not a it's not germane to the primary purpose. That's fine. OK, I think well, that I, I think that improves it. Thank you. Strike the last sentence. And uh, is the board OK with that? That from our taken from our meeting minutes, basically. Uh, Brendan, your hand is up. Sorry, legacy. Oh, OK. Uh, anything else, Mike? Go ahead. I'm going to just scroll on my screen. I was going to say the same thing. I, lo I love that term. It was a legacy hand. Oh, I didn't hear him. Legacy. <laughs> OK, uh, next bullet point is quoted from the plan. Natural spaces have been removed from the plan. HLB will pursue natural space plans for cons conservation areas on HLB lands separately. Page 17. This language is unfortunate and reads as if HLB intends to ignore future formal plans from the community. There is currently no locally adopted plan, only a version being drafted, and as described above, there will be future opportunity for public comment before local acceptance. Further, as a municipal entity, HLB has the additional privilege of providing a staff response during the process of formal municipal plan adoption. 
I think this reflects the discussion that we had. Anything from the board on this one? And that's part of the same sent same um, paragraph in the plan. We just split it up into two sentences. Uh, someone has their hand up. Jennifer. Again, somewhat friendly amendment here. What would we be open to striking the words is unfortunate and so that it reads this language reads as if HLB intends kind of striking out the editorial part of it again, if if amenable. I think that's an, personally, I feel that's an improvement to the language. It doesn't take away the impact at all. It probably soft, it improves it. I agree with the edit. Uh, any other comments until Brendan? Yeah, I would say I disagree with this bullet as well. Um, I mean, I would remind everybody, as has been mentioned before, these are HLB lands. You know, Girdwood has shown that a significant part of the community is concerned with these types of uses and uh, related to uh, their local community's lands. And, um, you know, HLB has a right to serve the, and indeed a mandate to serve the broader community, Girdwood and Anchorage in that way, especially if uh, Girdwood isn't going to do it. So, um, you know, for to be making a negative comments about HLB pursuing planning on their own lands, um, especially when it's actually responsive to uh, something that they recognize that um, members of the Anchorage community want. I think that's kind of strange. Thanks. Okay, thank you. You don't see other hands up. We'll move on to HLB signage plan is the next bullet point. HLB signage plan, page 17. While we appreciate this, sorry, while we appreciate that as a landowner, HLB may have their own requirements for signage, this section as written is unduly dismissive of Girdwood's broader interests in adopting a coherent and cohesive look and feel to the recreational trail facilities across the community. And this should sound familiar to meeting. Um, any comments, Guy? Guy and then Jennifer. Yeah, um, kind of going off Jennifer's tone, maybe um, inconsistent instead of unduly dismissive, something like that, soften it up a little bit. Jennifer? I was going to say something similar to what Guy said, so I'll leave it. OK. And the, it used to be called, before it was stricken, it was Girdwood HLB signage plan. And now it just says HLB signage plan. But it's in here stating that they would like the trails, the Girdwood Trails Committee to provide HLB with, with a language to begin a sign plan, uh, ostensibly for trails. So we thought that might conflict with the theme of the signs that are being upgraded, like on Iditarod and other places. Uh, Mike and then Shannon. Yeah, what, actually, what it actually says in their, um, in their plan is that HLB staff suggested that the Trails Committee provide a um, signage plan. Um, but HLB will take this on and adopt internally, requiring all permittees or easement holders to adhere to the standards set forth. So it's basically saying they're, uh, although they may have suggested in the past, they're going to do it themselves. So I, I don't, I would suggest changing the word slightly. So instead of unduly submissive, it, uh, dismissive, it says appears dismissive, because I think it does have that appearance. And again, so it's, all about, it's all about the tone of the, um, of the plan document. So after this section as written, we'd say. Appears dismissive. Appears dismissive. There's some I, mean, of the, I mean, some of the comments here are probably that the plan itself may not have the, may not be, may not end of, have ended up saying exactly what they meant it to say or coming across the way they wanted it to say too. 
So we're acknowledging that that may be the that may be what's going on. Right, so they're still dis discussing it amongst themselves and maybe editing it. Um, and I think that fits what Guy suggested. Um, Shannon? I think what I'm saying is kind of the same as what Mike's saying, but I wonder if it could be written in the positive where um, we request that HLB signage is coherent and cohesive in the look of our current signage or the plan signage for Girdwood Trails. Thank you. Um, and I know he's doing his edits so we could see the track changes. Uh, Jennifer. Sorry, I just wanted to circle back to something you said earlier. You were talking about this bullet point originally saying Girdwood HLB signage plan. Is that correct? I did say that because that's what I'm reading on my page. It used to say that, but they, think, they that's old now, not revised. I think to, to clarify it, the HLB work plan says Girdwood HLB signage plan with the word Girdwood striking out not this letter. Correct. OK, so quick clarification. I wasn't sure if that meant that you were part of drafting this, but you weren't. Is that correct? Oh, no, I'm looking at a piece okay. of paper that. OK, OK, like, the wait, old printout draft. And okay. uh, trying to read what they were initially writing because we quoted them. We meaning this document, we GBOS quoted them. Um, well, requirements for signage, they didn't say that. I'm making so, the assumption, I'm making the assumption that in the HLB plan as current the latest draft where something is stricken out, it means it's not meant to appear. So when we quote it, we don't quote the striking, we quote right. what's left. Okay. So that's why it says HLB signage plan rather than good with stricken out HLB signage plan. Right, it's, I didn't need to bring it up, so sorry for the confusion. No, that's OK. Can I make one other point? Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about the language on um, that as a landowner, HLB may have their own requirements for signage. Um, I would imagine if I was a landowner, I would assist, insist that I have my own requirements for signage. So um, maybe we could rework this sentence a little bit because of course HLB has a right to sign. Um, they, I think we should acknowledge again, it is it is their land whether we like it or not. So we could, we, we could just start as this sentence you know, or sorry, start with this section and then continue with the edits that Mike has already um, submitted to this sentence from there. Okay, and Jennifer, it says uh, HLB is adopting internally requiring all permittees and or easement holders to adhere to the standards set forth. So they're saying that they want to require um, like the trails committee, let's say, to adhere to their standards when they make their signs. Anyway, we have two hands up. So Mike and then Kaylee. Yeah, I think this this gets to kind of the fundamental problem we we have not with our language. I mean, the fundamental problem with uh, the way the HLB is structured and the land ownership occurs in the valley. So, yes, HLB is the owner of the land, but HLB is also meant to represent the municipality as a whole of the citizens of the municipality, including us. And um, the the way the document basically, I think the way the document came across, and again, as we discussed it, is that HLB is not beholden in any way to um, this community, not just especially, but not at all, um, except in a couple of um, a couple of uh, future priorities. But in the specifics of specific plans, they actually are fairly dismissive of the community. Um, and I think the you know the the mismatch here is the 
that HLB, while they have a responsibility for to benefit the community, uh, the sorry, the citizens of Anchorage as a whole, um, whenever they do things, it obviously has a disproportionate impact on the piece of land and the immediate neighbors of the piece of land. Um, so they are generally in a position where they um, where their role is to benefit the citizens of the community as a whole, but the costs. So the benefits are across the whole of the municipality. The costs are borne by those immediately nearby, which in the case of half of their land is Girdwood. So um, our job, I, I would say, as representatives, as elected representatives of the community, is to um, is to sort of provide an appropriate level of um, of response from the place where the impacts are actually felt. Um, and as such, they're not just they're not a private landowner by any means. They're a public landowner and they represent us um, as citizens of the community. And again, those who actually generally deal with the costs of that. So it's not just it's not the same way as if it was a uh, it was a private entity owning the land. But we can we can can speak on both sides. Kaylee. Kaylee's mic is broken. She put it in the chat. Oh, OK. From 8.08 PM. Well, I, I could read it, but I. OK. We could include something about our appreciation of HLB's desire to conserve and willingness to do some funding of our work for the trails plan. Regarding signage, we are working on the three or four sign in the series of standard signage for the Curdo Trails Committee. OK. Thanks, Shannon. Jennifer. Um, so I, I wasn't trying to wade into that whole business about the difference between what Girdwood might want and HLB might want, but um, Mike, I wonder if you would still feel like you, the point was getting across if we said from HLB signage plan page 17, if from there the sentence says this sentence, uh, whatever Guy said, this sentence appears dismissive of Girdwood's broader interest, blah, 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 keep the rest of the sentence from there and just take out the first uh, phrase there. Do you feel that like sounds fine. I don't think that I don't think that changes the sense at all. I agree. OK, all right, thanks. I'll make okay. that change in the draft. Too. OK, good. I'll read the next one out loud. Girdwood area plan update, page 17. The criticism of Imagine Girdwood as not being subject to the Open Meetings Act and requiring that as a condition of any future financial support seems both capricious and inconsistent with both HLB's own practices of limiting public comment and the standards to which it holds other partners. Can I just say beforehand, I'm fine if anyone wants to remove this. I'm still going to, I'm going to put it in something else that I write myself, if not. Mm -hmm. OK. Any hands up from the board? Brendan? Is it equally if the board doesn't want to remove it, I'm fine at staying in. OK. I see um, Jennifer and Amanda just jumped ahead of me, and since they're on the board, I'll, I could take a pass if that's fine, Brianna. OK. And, and then I'll Thanks. come it around after. Like yeah. Fast hands right there. So Amanda and then Jennifer. Thank you. Um, I would like to express my support of this comment and keep it in this document. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Jennifer, did you still have something? Uh, let me wait. Let me hear what okay. other people have to say. OK. Um, trying to open. Brendan, if you're next, then. OK, sure, thanks. Um, you know, I guess I would say I, I would personally remove this. Um, you know, I feel the comment's pretty unfortunate, and I think the term, terminology that's used in it is uncivil. Um, 
and I think it's also reasonable for the dispersal of public monies to entail recipients to follow established norms of transparency and openness, um, even more so when that work of that body, such as the area plan, is going to have significant public relevance. And also, I'd say when the plans process in question has had a significant history of problems, um, such as relating to transparency and openness. You know, this and the, and the minutes too, which kind of I think must have gone along maybe with this bullet point, I thought were pretty unfortunate uh, as pertains to the last sentence. You know, one thing, imagine Girdwood has, has not historically had is high public participation, uh, as is claimed in the GBOS minutes, and uh, using that non-fact, I guess I would say, to stick a dagger into HLB for using a standard public comment period is pretty unfortunate. Okay, Kaylee had a statement in with her hand up that she supports this statement. Uh, Amanda, your hand is still up in case you have another comment. Um, I was just going to see if Jennifer wanted to comment still, but then I, I will after she does if she does want to. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and, and again, smoke. Still okay. Um, I would say that the um, statement is correct and that we have in the past had good participation from the community. Not that we've had much going on right now um, with Imagine Girdwood as the process is stalled, but we have had good uh, participation. Thank you. Hey, Jennifer and then Guy. All right, sorry that took a while. What if we uh, just dialed it back a notch and said we would like to reiterate that Imagine Girdwood is subject to Open Meetings Act and um, let's leave it, we could leave it at that. Mike, you wanna to respond to that and then Guy? Yeah. It it is not subject to the Open Meetings Act because it's a non-profit, the same as uh, all the other non-profits the municipality oh, uh, provides right. grants to, okay, none sorry. of which are required to uh, meet. In fact, the Open Meetings Act itself only applies to governmental bodies, so it's a little bit of a weird um, non-secretary requiring it. Boy, I'm not loving this bullet point either. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure we need it. Guy? Yeah, no, this does read kind of a tit for tat, you know, um, with them. And if Imagine Girdwood, you know, could state their bylaws or, or whatever, you know, they operate under, maybe um, it would read better instead of, you know, you guys don't do it, so we don't do it. But yeah, this, this does read um, confrontational, and I, I don't think it improves the document. Okay, thanks, Guy. Anything else, Amanda? No, sorry, I'll put my hand down. That's okay. Uh, well, from from the perspective of without like putting this item to a vote, the statement still could be made by Mike on a personal level or another level from without this document. So, um. Mike? Can I recommend that we um, we hold this at the moment as a something when we when we make a final decision on the overall document that it would be reasonable to have an amendment to strike this? If we if we go to a, if if somebody chooses to move to um, approve the document as a whole, then it would be completely reasonable to have an amendment to strike this because I think we have a it's unclear whether there's a majority for or against it at the moment. So I think we should go through a vote later when we get to okay. that point. Okay. All right, I don't see any other hands up, so we can go to the next bold underline says other HLB management priorities. And we said GBOS especially welcomes the following commitments from HLB. Quoting enhance community trust and support for HLB functions and activities by ensuring a transparent, accountable process for proposals 
and carefully documenting the decision-making process with timely and proper outreach and notice. Page 18. Unfortunately, many members of the public have become suspicious of HLB's motives due to certain actions over the past couple of years, which appear to disregard those who are impacted most. We welcome a commitment to greater transparency and accountability and urge this to include permit actions as well as land disposals. Mike. Yeah, actually my hand was up from previously, but I do have a comment on this. So um, I think we touched on this a little bit, but the last sentence mostly comes from comments I've heard from other people in the community, um, not just the meeting here, uh, the meetings we had specifically, uh, or the, the two work sessions we had, so it's a combination of both. And the point here is not that I think HLBs, um, or I think we as a body do, I think it absolutely has, um, there is a perception in the community, so I think this is a welcome, a welcome commitment. Right, and the last statement, since it has been um, heard before, I think if we had another meeting, we'd probably come up with this. So, Jennifer and Guy, I don't know who is first, but why don't you go? Guy, why don't you go? <laughs> All right. No, just going back to your general statement, I think this, you know, that last sentence in there or, you know, something like that should be added to that general statement to set the tone of the letter. Like at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, how we discussed kind of at the beginning, I think that's. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I think that'd be beneficial to yeah, include that, set the tone. OK. Jennifer. Well, so speaking of tone, I think that uh, I wonder about the possibility of striking out this first sentence. Unfortunately, many members, I again, I believe it's uh, implied and doesn't necessarily need to be stated if we just put directly after this quote put, we welcome a commitment to greater transparency and accountability. Blah, blah, blah. The rest of that sentence. Mike. So um, my question is, is that because you do not believe that there is a, um, a perception in the community, a lack of trust and suspicion, um, or a lack of trust and a suspicion of HLB um, and their motives and decision making? Or is it because you believe there is, but we shouldn't state it? or neither of the above? I believe that it is well within the realm of possibility. How about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to argue that. I'm just not sure it's furthering our purposes. So as um, satisfying as it may be to say, I think we're, I think that we uh, can make a more powerful and also a more um, inclusive i mean we also have to represent the people that are not suspicious of hlp so i just I, I just feel like we it might actually be stronger without it because it um that's another one that might open us to attack on either tone or assumption yeah i i, I respectfully disagree i think we i think what we're doing here is acknowledging um the reality of the relationship between the broader community and HLB, um, and not doing so is, uh, in fact, you know, reduces our representative voice. So we're not actually representing uh, the the range of views in the community. We're stating this in a way where we don't necessarily, where we're not giving it validity necessarily. But I think it's it's about the perception of how. HLB is behaving and the, the perception the perception of how their document comes across as well. These both tie together. Thank you, Mike. And I was trying to think of how to explain how I feel about that sentence. And I feel like it's important to acknowledge what a lot of public has said at meetings over the last 
couple of years. And I feel like this sentence represents that concern. And we could change the tone of other parts like you've been doing. Uh, Mike and Shannon have their hand up. Shannon? Thank you. If that's going to be in the beginning, that's probably not the best sentence to have in there at that point. And maybe it could be reworded again to say something like, um, we want to ensure that the people who um, are impacted the most are represented in this plan and then say who those people are. Because I don't think that, I mean, whether we feel it or not, or whether it's, you know, a lot of the community feels it or not, it's not productive. I don't, sorry, I don't think it's going to be productive to say to HLB because I think that whether it's true or not, those are the kind of statements that make them push back a little bit harder. And I don't, I just don't know if that's productive. Thank you, Shannon. And this, that particular statement is not at the beginning of the letter. It's within this paragraph underneath our point saying, we especially welcome the following commitments from HLB. And so the quote bullet points are each from their plan of things that they are making commitments to do. Guy? Yeah, no, I was just gonna make that point. Yeah, I, I like that we welcome a commitment to greater transparency and accountability. I mean, that previous sentence is a little severe, but um, you know, I, I guess we've toned other things down in here. It, you know, just reading the HLB plan and when we read those type of comments in the plan, it um, it sets us back, right? But this isn't a plan, it is our comments actually. So um, leaving some of this strongly worded sentences in here um, does serve a purpose. And maybe in this case it, it does. Thanks, Guy. Any other ones before we move to their next uh, commitment? I'll read that one. Position HLB lands in Girdwood in a manner consistent with community-based adopted plans and HLB goals for development and conservation, page 19. GBOS supports this priority, although it does appear to be in conflict with some of the specific comments in the previous sections. We welcome a clear commitment to consistency with all community-based adopted plans. Anything to add to this from the board? And then Brendan? Uh, yeah, I guess I would just for this one, I would also reiterate again my point that I made earlier. Um, I don't really like this this point. And, uh, you know, I, I would reiterate the view that anybody, including L HLB, should most definitely be necessarily critical when it pertains to the quality of plans and their consistency with their own missions or mandates or policies. Um, and I just point out that just because Girdwood puts a stamp on a plan doesn't mean that it's good or that it was done well. Okay. Uh, Mike. Um, the the language in here is community based adopted plans, which means it's adopted by it may not say explicitly, but it means it's adopted by the municipality. So this does not refer to things which uh, pass through our local process. We give it the thumbs up and then gets rejected later on in the process or gets changed later on in the process. This represents uh, adopted plans. Any other comments from the board or the public? I think this matches our meeting minutes. Uh, the next commitment, periodically review and consult with municipal agencies and community councils to determine their need for HLB land to fulfill municipal purposes. When a municipal agency is in need of HLB land, that agency may submit an application, which will then be processed to a final decision. Page 19. 
As described above, much of the HLB land in Girdwood is critical to the recreational resources, both formal and informal, that form the ex existential environmental context of the community. As such, HLB should proactively review their own inventory and where the only practical use of Girdwood land is in its recreational utility, consider conveyance to other municipal departments which specialize in recreational land management. Any comments about this section? Mike? Uh, yeah, this was a, a it, it's mentioned elsewhere in slightly different ways, but this is meant to be a reiteration of um, of the issue about the recreational use of the land and that uh, there are definitely other entities which could uh, which are really spe which really specialize in uh, in recreational land management and uh, HLB does not. So this is just, you know, again, requesting that they they review for that purpose as well as um, quote, need HLB land as opposed to be more appropriate to manage HLB land. Thank you. Right, and in their plan, they mention they're going to survey land regularly in other places. So this is the comments here I'm fine with. Um, I can read the next section if there are no other comments from the board. It's not really a next section. So those were the bullet points of the commitments. And then the next sentence says, GBOS has concerns similar to those described earlier about the following stated priority. So here's the priority stated. As future projects in the Girdwood Valley develop that could negatively impact primitive open space, periodically review and consult with municipal agencies and the Girdwood community to assess potential impacts and ways to mitigate those identified. Page 19. The language of this priority, especially the language highlighted in the HLB work plan and reproduced exactly here, could easily be perceived as being deliberately provocative, adopting terminology which was removed from an earlier draft of the Girdwood Trails Plan. While this may be entirely coincidental, it further undermines the community's trust that HLB respects Girdwood's public process and will follow community-based adopted plans. I know it takes a little bit to read through and warm thoughts. But Brendan, you are ready. So go ahead. Thanks, Brianna. Um, yeah, I'm totally opposed to this being in there. You know, just as a general reminder, I'm a member of the public that supposedly this letter is representing. Um, but I would actually point out that actually that terminology was not in a previous draft. Primitive natural space was in a previous draft of the trails plan. Um, and I would also point out that that was removed in an illegitimate process. But aside from that, the existing language that is still in the draft plan, the trails plan is an exact synonym with that which was removed by the trails committee, that is primitive trail areas, which is all primitive natural spaces in terms of trails are about in the trails plan, which is something anyone, you know, who's paying attention to that process would know. Um, so, uh, and I would uh, just point out that, yeah, I guess I would just, I would stop there, but I would also note that they are still in the plan. So this seems um, factually questionable and problematic on a number of grounds. Thanks, Brendan. Mm, Jennifer. Actually, let me let Shannon go first. OK, Shannon, go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, just two comments. I think this one falls under similar with the one prior where the statement just said that the trail plan is not completed yet. And so again, we're making a comment about a, the trail plan um, when it's not complete yet. Um, so 
the language, some of the language is still in there. And we also don't know the exact, um, def, you know, they don't have definitions or maybe they do and I didn't read far enough of their terminology. And if it's the same as what we're using in the trail plan, I don't know that. Um, some people use open space different, some people use natural space different, but um, I forgot my other point. So there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Well, when you remember, just put your hand back up. But the quote was from their, their plan. Um, talking about future projects. Right. Oh, that's what, thank you. That's what I was going to say. Um, I feel like we're sending somewhat of a message that we, you know, we want control over development and that we don't want, that we want trails, but we don't want any un undeveloped areas. And so I want to be careful of that because as a community member, I don't share that view. I think that we need to balance it. And so um, we're really, this document is pushing back a lot on any protected area in no matter what form. And so I want the message to be that the community has input, but that not that we don't necessarily support it. Okay. Thank you. Mike. Um, I would say that the it's important to read what this actually says and not infer other things. Uh, what this actually says is that the plan has highlighted a particular phrase which um, has caused problems and complexity in the trails plan and by highlighting that it's kind of poking at a wound and uh, that just does not seem like a great idea. Um, so it does appear provocative. I think that's a fair comment. Um, and again, all the people have commented on this because it is uh, it is highlighted as a bolded term within the HLB plan, um, and it's probably just not a good thing to do. Um, and this, I think, acknowledges that. Um, I agree. We don't have a we don't have a trails plan. There was an earlier draft of it. But there's been there was a lot of discussion about the language, and this may be entirely coincidental. Um, however, it does push um, against the open door that. Uh, that HLB is not being not really respecting the, uh, the either the public process in Goodwood or um, or the any requirement to follow plans that are adopted. Thank you, Mike, for pointing that out. It's important to clarify uh, which is whose statement. Who's this whose statement? Any other comments from the board? Okay, Brendan. Uh, yeah, um, the point that I'm making, or one of the points was that this language, primitive open space was actually not in the draft trails plan and therefore was not removed from an earlier draft of the trails plan. That is the factually problematic part. And I guess as just an aside comment, my personal view is that the public process in Girdwood related to this was not something that should be respected. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Mike. I take Brendan's point about the language, um, the specific phrase primitive open space. So um, I would propose this following slight change um, in the third center or third line from the bottom of the paragraph where it says um, comma adopting terminology. I would just change that to adopting similar terminology. And then we cover the fact that it isn't precisely the same. It's clearly it's it's in it's generally indicative and the point still stands, but I think that's technically accurate. It's not exactly the same terminology. I agree with that, adopting similar terminology. And then a comma before which. If you might edit. Uh, any other comments from the board? Jennifer. Um, I, d I don't know what to say about this exactly besides that it it is um, not something I agree with. And I can't even imagine how to fix it. I I understand I, the our original conversation around this, although my interpretation of it was a little different. I took it to be of interest that there were uh, differing 
understandings about the importance of primitive open space. I didn't understand them to be purposefully trying to poke Girdwood in the eye. And um, so I don't I don't like that we're taking this victim stance here. And I and I definitely don't like speaking as a board um, in in this manner. I, I just I, I don't see any I don't I don't understand the good that can come out of this as written. I just I, I can't come up with anything positive that might come out of this as written. Thanks, Jennifer. Brendan. Sorry, it's a legacy again. Oh, I was going to say that. Uh, OK, Mike. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, I think the. How to phrase this. I think the issue isn't that this and this particular point is going to generate something outstandingly good from it. I think this is just again a point of there are multiple points in the document in which it's just another example of um, the multiple points in the document where the document is unduly critical of this community. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, there's at least one community member in this meeting who was also very uh, critical of the community and the community process. Um, but I don't think that's the job of HLB to do. And uh, I think just pointing out examples again, which in this case is probably uh, very open to misinterpretation, may help them just cleaning up the language a little bit. So it's about perception. Mm -hmm. And this is their, their priority. So when we say the language of this priority, um, we produce exactly Can we take out the word easily? Could be perceived as being deliberately provocative, adopting similar terminology, comma, which was removed from an earlier draft of the Girdwood Trails plan? I was going to suggest taking out deliberately. OK. Take out deliberately instead of instead of easily. OK, I'm fine with that edit. OK, uh, Jennifer. Well, uh, just in the interest of trying to be productive, I'd like to throw out a, a, the possibility of a different edit that says uh, the language of this priority appears to further undermine the community's trust that HLB respects Girdwood's public process and will follow community based adopted plans. And we could take out accusing them of being deliberately provocative. Right, that's a new twist on Mike's edit. And that shortens it, and it sounds good. Uh, and it's on the record because you said it really clearly. Um, any other, any objections from Amanda or a guy or anyone for the latest edits? Guy? No, I think if we do reference the Girdwood Trails plan, um, it's important to note that it is still in draft form. Mm-hmm. OK. Mike, your hands up. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I think um, I think removing the word deliberately takes out the um, achieves the same goals as uh, Jennifer's suggestion. But actually, by keeping the rest of the sentence in there, we acknowledge it's um, it's about perception. It's not about reality. I think if we take out that whole sentence, it looks like we're saying that's what they mean. And we're not saying that's what they mean. We're saying that it just pushes, it pushes in the direction of people of being open to misinterpretation, potential misinterpretation. We're not saying whether they mean it or not. That's the point. Okay. But I think if we take out the whole sentence, we are actually stating they do, they did mean it that way. And I don't think that's what we're trying to say. I agree. It needs to highlight the perception. Okay, Brandon, your hands up. 
I guess I'd just say two things. Uh, you know, first of all, I'd remind everybody this is not even an adopted plan. So this all seems like a non, non sequitur. Um, and, you know, elsewhere you've asked HLB to be involved. And so um, that's all just very strange in the context of this. But secondly, you know, if the previous comment, or if not the previous comment, but if Mike's previous comment about somebody in the room uh, being critical of the community as well as its processes was directed at me, which I'm assuming it was, I would love to hear when I made a statement critical of the community as a whole, as opposed to just particular processes. Um, and I would just remind everybody, my understanding is we actually have a code of conduct at this body. So that's all. Okay. Mike. Yeah, I, if uh, I did say, I did actually say critical of community and I corrected myself to critical of community process. That's what I meant. I did not mean to imply critical of the community. And uh, I'm sorry if I gave that impression. And I, of course, I was commenting on uh, on um, Brendan's specific comments about not respecting the um, the outcome of the local process, um, which I think he said was I can't remember your words were invalid or I can't remember the exact word, but effectively it was a I think again we could go back and listen, but it was a it was a criticism of the uh, of the local process and the outcome of that process. Thank you, Mike. Well, from this latest edit, I think we could move to trespass remediation. And I'll read that. GBOS acknowledges the HLB land has been damaged and unauthorized. Oh, sorry. Damaged by unauthorized use of machines and supports HLB's efforts to prevent additional damage. However, we would urge those efforts to have minimal visual impact so use of natural rocks, etc., would be preferable to visually intrusive approaches such as high fencing. That reflects our discussion. And I have nothing to add or edit. Anyone else? Okay, I don't see any hands, but I hear something. No, that looks good. I just wanted to say it looks good. And I do appreciate the work that went into this. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, I was just looking at that one today because they called it something else in their plan somewhere. Mike. Uh, I just have a process question. Um, there was a discussion which I didn't completely understand if, if there was a um, concrete outcome of moving some general language to the beginning of the document. I think I've captured everything else that was discussed, um, but I did not capture that. And I know I think Guy was um, talking about it when we were talking about um, it, the relationship the between one, HLB and. Yeah, it's the very first bullet point under other HLB management priorities. That final sentence, we welcome a commitment to greater transparency and accountability and urge this to include permit actions as well as land disposals. I think I, I thought it was I thought it was earlier in our discussion today. Um, uh, there was another one too. When there was a suggestion to bring some language to the front in, in the in the changes I've tracked here, I've more brought the Holton Hills paragraph to the I've added the other comments. So it's now three paragraphs brought that to the beginning of the document after the introduction. And I will share this um, in a minute. We can share it on the screen. Um, and uh, I've made, I think, all the other changes that we seem to agree on by consensus, um, except for that one about uh, the other language moving to the beginning, and I didn't moving completely understand it. Okay, guys, do you it recall? The, it was oh. around the comment, it was around the topic of um, the relationship between HLB's ownership of the land and the community and how the impact hits the community, I believe. But I'd like Guy to just reiterate. No, I am. Um, I, my comment was the um you know that let me find the, the sentence in there that we i think um brianna had stated it that we would appreciate a more open um discussion of, of permits and, and land conveyance um it, under that general heading at the beginning I'm not I'm still not clear if there's a specific 
um, a specific change that's been recommended here. I'm sorry, I'm just not quite catching it. No, I just think under that general comment, if you have a sentence um, in there that says we welcome a commitment to greater transparency and account accountability and urge this to include permit actions as well as land disposals. Um, something along those lines in that opening general paragraph that kind of sets the tone for the um, document. Is Margaret here? Margaret is not here. She had to leave today for a family uh, thing, okay. so she is out till Monday. Okay. I can just I, for the sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say for the purpose of process, can I share what I am um, the uh, the the tracking I have with you, Kyle? I will send you an email and you can put that on the screen. Uh, I think that reflects what we agreed. Uh, I think, Mike, how about uh, I close my sharing and see if you can share it directly from yours? Because I okay. have to leave, I have to leave here shortly for uh, my family. Okay, understood. I will send that. I have to send it to another computer, but if you give me one minute. But I, I agree there was one other sense we suggested moving, bumping to the top. I think Jennifer mentioned something along those lines about the housing and needs in Girdwood. I'm not trying to throw you in the bus, Jennifer, but I thought I thought you had said something and maybe that will just fall under the Holton Hills bullet that we're going to move to the top. Oh yeah. She had a nice opening statement or second statement. Yeah. OK, that's probably what it was then. And then starting the document with or the letter with HLB comments first. I mean, Holton Hill's comments first. Right, sorry, I didn't jump in. I thought um, somehow or other, I thought that was already set. But um, I, yeah, I don't even remember what I said, so I'm glad it's being recorded. I apologize for the delay. I just need to uh, get a document to another location. It's going to take about another minute or two. Um, maybe during that time, just a, a brief comment to to highlight. You know, our comments, would it be worth. Pulling that out of the, you know, when we. We quote what is in the plan right now and then our comments follow that. And to highlight those, could we you know, hit return and write, you know, GBOS comment or something on there. So it's clear where our comments start and end. Yeah. Like Q&A kind of when you're reading something. I think uh, I think keeping the bullet point with the um, where there's a direct quote, keeping the bullet point with the quote and then having the response in the next line makes sense. That, would, yeah. that should clarify it. Thanks for that suggestion, Guy. Actually, I'm going to open another window and join the um, I'm I'm having some delay here getting the file across, so I'm going to do something a little different. I'm joined from a different machine. For I know we have four more minutes, but for point of process, do we need to move to extend the meeting? So we can uh, ten o'clock uh, hours when you have to extend the meeting. Oh, well, OK. I hope you're done by then. Yeah, never mind. So sorry, I'll make this larger. So this is the version I tracked based on, I think, the consensus comments. So the opening paragraphs stay the same. Um, I just moved one sentence up to here because uh, I think it's part of the same paragraph. Um, there's an introductory 
sentence here that says the most important nature of the initiative when it goes with Hilton uh, Hills development. So we'll address this first. Then there's the section on Holton Hills, which has the first paragraph um, reflecting the need for a land use study. So HLB's own procedures recognize the lead, need for a land use study before any major development disposal. There has been no such land use study for the specific Holton Hills proposal or any land use study in the past decade for development of Crow Creek neighborhood. GBO strongly recommends that an updated land use study be performed, which also reflects recent changes to the housing market. This study should include impacts on workforce housing if this project goes forward. This is mostly taken from the uh, minutes of our uh, previous meetings. The next paragraph is as originally proposed, and then the last paragraph again is taken directly from the um, uh, from the from the minutes. That could probably be cleaned up slightly. So that's a stronger statement and a more complete statement about Halton Hills brought to the very front. And then everything else follows um, as before. So, you know, I've made changes, um, taking out various words. Um, I will do as suggested. Where there's a quote. Uh, this paragraph, sorry, this paragraph we should um, we should vote to include or exclude later, I believe. Well, that's my recommendation, but it's it's up to motion. Kyle, your hand is up. Hey, Mike, can you click on the the red tabs on the side to make the edits show up in the paragraph? Oh yeah, I can I can change. I think the best thing way to do that is do full marker. OK, there we go. And uh, just for order uh, here, I have to leave uh, in five minutes. And so uh, this meeting will continue to record. And if you need something of staff, um, I, I will be working remotely while I'm out of town. So uh, I can help you take care of that. Margaret is unfortunately out till Monday, so she can't do minutes. Um, but if we need to put this into a letter for you, uh, we can I can format that from afar. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks for being here for extra I I'll just go through this again. You're cutting um, out, Mike, for a second. OK, I will go through this again with uh, the full changes. So this sentence was introduced, uh, was put in as an introduction to the Holton Hills. The Holton Hills language was uh, brought forwards. This is all new. Well, the first paragraph is new. The second paragraph is moved. The first paragraph, third paragraph is new. Um, the we replaced surprise with concerned. Uh, we took out I think raised a question about HLB's acceptance of the outcome. The go to appropriate process rather than the rather ambivalence and one willingness comment. Um, I think that's just a change between text and plan. We would I'm trying to be more consistent in the language. Um, earlier was confusing, so public comment. We took out that this would be best for both parties. The unfortunate was removed. Um, we took out that sent the sentence about we appreciate as landowner, etc. Um, and unduly was replaced with appears. Um, go to the area plan update again. We have that paragraph to discuss or potentially remove. Um, Did not make any changes in these three. I can't remember if we made this. May have been as I, I may not have put track changes on because I don't think I caught anything. Is there anything miss anything wrong here that shouldn't be there? Uh, just Guy's last suggestion to. Oh yes. To kind of like the, the response goes below. Yes. Uh, their quote. That while you're there, you can do that one. I'll fix the formatting of that. Yeah, it looks like a bullet point, but it's just because it's an edit that's blue. Right. OK. Um, took out the word deliberately and put in the word similar. Um, and trespass remediation stayed the same. 
that's the whole build paragraph that moved and then thank you for consideration, etc. OK. And I'll make sure this is saved. If we go back to the. The simple markup. There we go, that's how it would look again. The indentation may not be quite correct, but it's fixable. Thank you, Mike. For sharing and doing those edits while live. OK, do we have a motion for our GBOS letter? I would move Edited. that we accept draft two as currently on the screen. I we second. Do. OK, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Our are we going to discuss the? Um, well, we could Gerd we could vote well. first, and then, and then, well, actually, because we have a second and no discussion right now that I hear, unless there's discussion, we could vote. As far as I understand, whatever the due process is. Um, are I you going to suggest an amendment, Guy? to take out that paragraph. I don't know if it necessarily needs to be removed. I think that that last. Part of that long sentence okay. doesn't do any good and, and you'd be better served stating the facts of, of how Gert imagine Gerd would operate as opposed to um, that last sentence, but that's my two cents. Do you have a suggest suggested language? I would just after. Um, I, I would just. I, I don't know what, how it's written in your um, bylaws, but. Just remove the. Um, seems both capricious and inconsistent with both HLB's own practices and limiting public comment and the standards to which it holds other partners. I would just say I, I would recommend stating that GERD would imagine GERD would operate under whatever um, process you operate and there's leave it at that. But. Any other comments from the board? I'm, I'm going to, for, for simplicity, I'm going to uh, propose an amendment that we just strike that paragraph completely. Okay. I may not vote for it, but I'm going to make that uh, move the amendment. Okay. We have a second for the amendment. I'll second that. OK, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, for any other, dis I think that we now need to vote on the um, amendment first or the first one first. Uh, can I just mm. speak to the amendment? I'm yes. I'm in two minds. I think honestly, the um, I, I take the I take the points about the it would need quite a lot of work to change it, and um, I think the keeping it as it is or removing it are both valid choices and probably easier than trying to make a change. So uh, that's why I want to provide a straight up or down choice for the, for the board. OK. Uh, for process, am I needing to call on any community for discussion before one of the votes? Brendan, do you have a comment for the discussion? No, sorry, I put my hand up when you were talking about the main motion. I can save my public comment for when you're talking about the, the main motion. OK. OK, thanks. Um, so first, I'm not clear on which one we need to vote on first. Mike, which one do we vote on first? Do you mind if I, yeah, my recommendation would be that we vote on the amendment so we decide whether to keep or remove this paragraph. Mm -hmm. So my amendment was to remove the paragraph, so a vote yes, we'll remove the paragraph, and a vote no, we'll keep it. And then we would vote on whether to accept the whole document. OK, so first we will vote on the amendment. So a yes vote you said is to remove it. Remove that paragraph, the paragraph that starts with good with area plan update. 
Okay. And a no vote means to keep it. So yes. I will do roll call for the amendment and starting with Jennifer. Just clarifying, I think I got this. We're removing it with a yes vote. So yes. I vote yes. Okay. Okay. Amanda? I'm going to abstain. Okay. Guy? Yes. Um, Mike? Yes, it's clean it without. Okay. Myself? It doesn't matter, but I'll say no. And so that passes three to one with one abstention. So we'll go back to the main motion. Any discussion on the main motion? Brendan. Thanks, yeah, I'll just be short and sweet and say as a Girdwood resident, I am opposed to GBOS sending this letter as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, I'll do roll call. Um, Wait, sorry. Sorry, Brianna, could I just jump in real quick? Yes, yes, please. Um, I do want to point out, I, I feel compelled to that even with our edits, we still have language that um, accuses, basically accuses HLB of everything for being, uh, ignoring plans from the community, being unduly dismissive, um, being uh, critical of good in general. I just, I don't feel right as, though I feel that we have important things to say, I don't feel right as a member of GBOS taking a, a stance of what feels like, what reads like victimhood. And also we have to work with HLB in the future. And I'm not sure that this document in the end does more good than harm. So I just want to clarify why, despite all the work that we've done on it, I, I just don't think I can vote for it. Thank you, Jennifer. Any other discussion? Mike? I will be voting for it. I think it's important that we represent the, um, the community as a whole and um, I think HL, HL, I wouldn't say it's tool victimhood. I think we're just pointing out problems in the uh, in the way HLB um, presented their plan and included material in their plan. I don't think they did a, I don't think they, um, they produced something that's particularly professional, honestly, in, in those aspects. Um, and uh, I think we would be remiss if we did not point that out. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Jennifer, your hand up again. Yeah, can I just address, I, I, we don't need yep. a lot of cross conversation at this point, but I would like to say um, that I, I don't agree with many of the things in the HLB plan, and I, I do agree with some of the things that we've called them out for. So, and that, uh, so uh, and for the, this, it makes it a, a difficult vote for me because in the fundamentals, I agree, but uh, the tone of this I'm finding problematic to vote for as a representative of the community and to say that this is the Girdwood voice uh, isn't something I'm comfortable with. Thank you for sharing. Okay, if there are no further comments for discussion, we'll go back to the motion. But Guy, see your hand. No, I, I, I think I should weigh in. Um, yeah, I I still think there's some things in here that are. Um, I don't think we gain anything by um, criticizing or or um, speaking as they did, you know, in, in their plan, how they, you know, kind of talk down or whatever to Girdwood in our planning process. I, I don't think we gain anything from that. And I do agree with that, but I, I do think that it's important to um, let them know our, our views. And, and so I, it's a tough vote for me for sure, but I, um, I think, th I think that um, the good outweighs the badness, but I, I don't, I don't think the criticisms in there are, 
are productive. Thank you, Guy. OK. We will then take a vote on the motion to um, with these edits from April 5th special meeting, approve the letter that we all edited. Um, I'll start with Jennifer. No. Amanda. Yes. Guy. Yes. Mike. Yes. Brianna. Yes. Motion passes four to one. And we will we'll follow through with what Kyle said. Um, sorry, I didn't read everyone's last names the way that Mike, or sorry, the way that Kyle does it. Um, Mike. I just want to say thank you for all the work and uh, I appreciate everyone's comments. The, the I think the critical comments actually made the document much better. Thank you. Thank you for receiving them so well and uh, doing all the hard work of putting together the hours of minutes from our previous hours of meetings. So I'll go back to the agenda, which is somewhere, and move to number two on our agenda, which is finalize the MOA GBOS April 25th quarterly meeting agenda. So if I will read it and it's uh, what's something we've looked at, but we just need to look at it again. Update on funding slash repayment from October 2021 storm damage, which will be Kyle updating. Then Girdwood Fire Department topics, our status of EMS contract, $15,000 area-wide budget shortfall, Girdwood EMS funding as line item in future AFD budgets, area-wide first quarter budget revision request for extrication equipment, and then the next bullet point is HLB topics, the HLB annual work plan revisions, and Girdwood Residential 2021 project, Holton Hills. Another bullet point, Glacier Creek Bridge, and another bullet point is AWWU. Does anyone have any suggestions to add to the meeting? And, uh, I don't know if you can share it, Mike, but if everyone has it in front of them, um, I'm fine with just reading it. Brianna, I'm sorry, I'm not sure where to see this. Okay, it's on today's agenda. And um, so Kyle had it on his screen. I, I will be able to show it on the screen in just a second. And then Mike can share in a, in a second. Does that make sense, Jennifer? That it's on the agenda? Yeah, sorry, I, I was looking for, yeah, sorry, I was looking for. No, thanks for asking. <laughs> but if off the top of your head, if there's something that we should add, this is our chance to uh, discuss it or add it for the quarterly meeting with the municipality. I do have a question. And this is for anyone that was at the last Imagine Girdwood meeting. I thought that we were going to ask for some uh, budget help with moving that plan forward. Uh, I think that. I don't know if that's through we, GBOS. It could be. Amanda? Sorry, <laughs> um, we are working on the Imagine Girdwood is working on uh, asking her looking at funding through the um, planning department um, and hopefully we'll learn more as money starts coming in. Um, I think for infrastructure bill, I can't remember what um, uh, they're waiting for um some bill to come through with more money but 
Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Mike. Yeah, just speaking to that, there are two two possible paths. One is uh, asking for um, money from the assembly through the first quarter budget revision, uh, which would probably be a direct task, but you know, obviously um, GBOS could support that. Um, and the other one would be through the um, through the potential future uh, infrastructure bill, the IAJ, IIJ. So there are two potential paths. Uh, there's a little bit more information we're expecting back from the uh, planning department um, before it's clear which one is preferable. So it's a little bit tricky though, right? Because this meeting happens before our next GBOS meeting. Right, so it's it's a, I, I, I would recommend it's done independently from GBOS. Okay. But uh, obviously, you know, GBOS could advocate for it if you choose. Actually, could I could I ask that we ask about that as a could I ask the board about that and what we think? I mean, I think it's pretty clear that we need to fast track getting our Girdwood area plan out in whatever way we can. So can I ask the board's opinion about um, at least bringing up this possibility at the combined meeting? Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Guy? Yeah, would this be something that Imagine Girdwood would take on on their own and then ask for a support from GBOS for this funding at a later date? Amanda or Mike? I, I will you know? speak. I'll sp be speaking from the perspective of a um, of someone involved in the Imagine Girdwood process here. Um, the the funding route would probably be um, a direct grant from the assembly to probably from the assembly via planning to Imagine Girdwood, um, although it could be done directly from the assembly. Um, it wouldn't be through GBOS because GBOS does not have planning power. So I know it cannot come through GBOS. It would either come directly from the assembly or via uh, the planning department, which would be separate from the larger grant which planning are looking for to um, to, to address about 15 different plans of which the Girdwood uh, comprehensive plan is just one. But I, I think if I, I don't feel it's a weird space because I don't feel I can quite speak to it on behalf of from the GBOS perspective in this particular meeting. Um, but uh, if you if the three people who are not directly involved in um, Imagine Girdwood wish to add it to the agenda, that seems reasonable. I just don't want to be part of that discussion today. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so that's up to Guy and Amanda, sorry, Guy and Jennifer and myself. And I am fine with adding it on, but someone needs to um, suggest it and then we can put it on. Uh, I will suggest it. Thanks, Jennifer. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, guys. I don't think it hurts to add it on because it is definitely important <laughs> to say understatement in our community. Uh, and that would be. Well, we'll submit that to Margaret, but do we need to vote on this or just I'll ask if there's any objections? Um, because. Obviously, two of our members are involved with the matching group. So let's see, anything else to add to the meeting that we know of right now? I'm not looking at my draft. OK, I don't I don't have anything and we can make changes up to uh, up to and including the meeting itself. Although okay. I didn't like wait before. All right, thanks, Mike. Then we'll move on to number three, which was our addition for today's meeting to talk about the Alaska Senate or the state Senate redistricting update that was in the paper today. Um, Mike couldn't speak to this, but they have a meeting. I looked it up on their website. They had a meeting today and they have one tomorrow now at 10 a.m. So thanks, Mike. Yeah. There was a meeting set. So um, 
full sequence is the state level um, redistricting board uh, made a proposal about they uh, designed 40 different uh, house seats and then paired them into 20 uh, Senate seats. Uh, they did the proclamation back in November. Um, there were several legal challenges against that. The Superior Court um, ruled, I think, on two, accepted two challenges and rejected three. It then went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court accepted one of the two challenges, which the Superior Court had accepted, rejected the other challenge, which the Superior Court had accepted, and then kind of re-accepted part of one of the three, which the Superior Court had rejected. So um, at this point, basically, it went back to the, it went back via the Superior Court to the board. So the board now have two changes to make. One is um, in Cantwell, uh, which has no real bearing on us as good with the community. Uh, the other one was changing the pairing of Senate seats in Anchorage across Anchorage municipality. And um, that does have a potential bearing on us. So the redistricting board is going to accept um, proposed changes to the pairings um, through tomorrow. Um, there is a there was a meeting on Saturday with public hearing. There was a meeting yesterday with public hearing. There's a meeting today with public hearing. There will be a meeting tomorrow with public hearing and I think also on Thursday and Friday, but um, they're accepting proposals um, up until the end of tomorrow. But there are three proposals which are currently in play and I'm just going to share those here. Um, the first part is the Campbell things so that doesn't really affect us at all. There was a, uh, a District 36 sort of came out and grabbed Cantwell and uh, the Superior Court said no. Or the Supreme Court said no, you shouldn't do that. So they've proposed a simplification to that. The thing that's um, important to us is we are House District 9, which is down here, which is um, the more southern part of the hillside, Rabbit Creek, um, Bear Valley, uh, Stuckigan Heights up here, um, and then all the way down to um, Turnigan Arm, Girdwood, Portage, and Whittier. Um, the this is the first proposed pairing at the moment. Um, the the proposal or the the thing which is struck down was pairing um, splitting Muldoon into two, pairing one southern Muldoon with the southern part of Eagle River and northern part of Eagle River with Chaber. Uh, that's been struck down. So now there are three choices that's been proposed so far. The first one is um, has a number of changes. But Eagle River is paired with Eagle River. Jay Bear is paired with Downtown. And then the thing that's relevant to us is um, House District 9, which is us, is paired with House District 11, which is basically the more southern part of the hillside and into um, sort of up to uh, Independence Park and that area. Um, I think this is basically south of uh, Abbott. Um, this is kind of roughly similar to um, the the district we have for House District 6 now, uh, sorry for Assembly District 6. Assembly District 6 is a bit bigger because it comes over here as well, but it's roughly similar. Um, proposal number two um, also pairs, is actually slightly fewer changes than uh, proposal number one. It pairs the Eagle Rivers North and South. Again, Jay Bear is uh, paired with here. The um, green ones are the things that are different from the existing thing. So the existing pairing keeps House District 9 we don't tie with uh, the southern part of the hillside. Um, we do tie with um, with Ocean View and Bayshore. Um, so that was that's option two. And option three is um, that the southern part of uh, Eagle River is tied to Turnigan Arm. Um, and this is very similar to one of the, um, in terms of this pairing across the Chugach Mountains, it's very similar to one of the maps that we rejected when we discussed the um, assembly redistricting plan. So given there is a very, very, very limited amount of time to comment on this, and we'd already um, expressed an opinion on the assembly redistricting, I thought it would be good to give us the opportunity to express an opinion if we choose on um, the Senate of the US, oh, sorry, the um, state, Alaska state Senate pairings. Um, so these are the three basically that are they're in play now. There may be some others, but these are the three we know about today. Um, so the first one again is similar to the um, the eastern two thirds of uh, House Dis of Assembly District Six. The second one is 
similar to the more southern part of Assembly District 6, and the third one is, uh, is Eagle River and uh, Girdwood. And we can express an opinion similar to the one we did. We could basically take what we did before and just change some words. We could express no opinion at all. I just thought we should have the opportunity to discuss it. Thank you, Mike, for sharing these maps and explaining so clearly. Uh, from what I read, I didn't realize that there were was the two options, Bayshore with nine versus up to Abbott with nine. Um, but I did hear about the joining with Eagle River part. And the parts that I read significant uh, feedback from were supporting Ben Key's maps, and that was to not join Eagle River in Girdwood uh, from a lot of people. Any comments from the board? Jennifer? Hey, Mike, I wanted to thank you for your analysis on this because, as usual, it's thorough and helpful. And I know I wasn't a, a huge fan of speaking up before, but I think this is, uh, I, I think this situation is different. Uh, and we definitely might have an interest in speaking up for the sake of the community, particularly in not being paired with Eagle River. Thanks, Jennifer. And in the sake of time sensitivity, since they are already having the meetings in the morning, I think the idea or the suggestion of just changing what we already wrote um, with, with the basic premise would, would be the easiest and most clear uh, message to send to this the Senate board. Mike? If we if we're going to make a comment, can we um, can we try and agree on a preferential ordering of the three or a rejection of any of them? I think so. I would propose that we reject option three, which is always state a unequivocal um, opposition to option three, which is the Eagle River and Girdwood pairing. Um, but I am not clear if we have a consensus on whether we prefer option one or two. Or whether we want to propose something separate, uh, and I don't think we do. Right. Thank you, Guy. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about the assembly redistrict redistricting, where do we land on that? Um, which one looks more similar to the one that we landed on? I thought the, the our final map that obviously when the Eagle River um, pairing with them. Oh, was it the Bayshore? Is that the map that? Would... I think we're. It's a bit tricky because the the assembly districts are about thirty to forty percent bigger. Um, so the the assembly district we ended up with is, or well, the one we supported was probably closer to map to option one here, but it also included some of option two. So it did go further across and went to uh, cover parts of uh, Bayshore Ocean View. I guess without knowing more about it, you know, uh, just an opposition to the Eagle River pairing would kind of be where I come from. Hmm. So my sense is that option one is a little closer to the assembly district, but I, again, I think we, uh, my sense is I honestly I'd be happy with option one or two. I have a slight preference for option one, but I think option two is fine as well. They're both they're both somewhat similar. Option one is a little bit more um, contains more of kind of hillside. And option uh, two does not contain hillside really. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I also like the position that more of Anchorage would appreciate, like hillside would like to be more a part of more south than they would going other stretches usually. So I agree with um, omitting completely the third option and that we would be supportive of the um, options one or two with the statement saying that 
whatever makes more of Anchorage happy if if they get more of like positive feedback for map one, we would like map one. Or uh, and I don't know who made each one, but Benki seemed to be making the more favorable maps for all the people that commented. Jennifer? Um, I was just wondering if, if we want to go that far or in depth, or if for the sake of simplicity and then also to stay focused on Girdwood interest, uh, what if we just made a clear board statement in opposition to option three? I like that, Jennifer. So just to clarify, the proposal is that we we show that we object to option three. Um, we do not express a preference between options one and two. Is that correctly stating what you said, Jennifer? Yes. That I just okay. thought for the sake of time, simplicity and everything else, why don't we just uh, agree to disagree with or, or to oppose, I'm sorry, option three. That makes sense, thank you. And then Kaylee has her hand up, but I, I don't see anything in the chat. I don't know if she can speak in her mic. Yes. I have now moved, I'm now in the same room as Kaylee, so she can steal my microphone if she wishes. Just tell me what I'm going to ask. She's going to relay it across the room. Huh? I don't know if we're going to make a statement about a definitive statement also that says we do not want to be fair and equal regardless. So um, Kaylee said, suggested we should make a definitive statement that we do not want to be paired with Eagle River um, rather than just talk about option three in case other options are introduced. I see. Yeah, that's more clear because in the on the website it says they only have they're meeting tomorrow, but they don't know if they're going to meet for sure the next two days and they will take maybe more maps, correct? So it's a good point. Jennifer? Uh, so Brianna, would it make sense uh, for me to make a motion at this point that we officially oppose option three and any other possible pairings or any other maps that end up that might pair us with Eagle River? Yes. Thank you, Jennifer. We have a I'll motion second. on the table then. Uh, go I'll ahead, whoever that. was talking. I'll second that. Okay, that's what's going on. We have a second. Any other discussion? Okay, let us vote for the motion to not be paired with Eagle River on this map or any other maps presented in the future for the Senate. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Guy? Yes. Mike? Yes. Brianna is yes. So that motion passes. Flying colors. And then uh, the action then would be, um, Guy has his hand up too, but because the meeting's at 10 a.m. tomorrow, but what you read, Mike, was that they have, they will take a written comment or all day? Uh, the the deadline tomorrow is just about proposing new maps and we're not doing that. So we can, oh. uh, we can submit it as a written comment uh, any time in the next few days. Okay. Guy? Yeah, no, that was it. Whose action is it? Who's going to speak for the board? Mike, do you have an answer? Um, I think in terms of writing the resolution, I hope the language is clear um, and that uh, perhaps staff can do it, but I, I can, I'm definitely happy to draft something. Um, I can do it immediately after this meeting and uh, and send it, but it will reflect exactly what we said here. So it kind of sounds like staff is just going to be out of pocket for a minute, so. Yeah, so I'll, I'll steal one of the templates and do that. Thank you. And thanks everyone for talking about this. It's really front in the news right now and important to uh, Betsy, you have your hand up. I do. I'm wondering as an individual citizen who we contact or if there is a place for public comment about what a terrible idea pairing us with Eagle River is. 
Absolutely, um, there is a place, and it's this website Mike was just at. They're taking lots of public comments, so I'll let him answer. It's, it's akredistrict.org. Okay. Um, and there's details on there about when the public hearings are, if you want to turn up in person in Anchorage or call in, um, and then also the um, the email address to send comments to, and also I think they have a form which you can uh, you can send comments through the website. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Betsy. And uh, yes, I encourage you to participate. It was easy for me to navigate the site today. Um, any other comments? I don't see public comment on our agenda. Oh, yes, I do. Sorry, I didn't scroll down. All right, if there's nothing else, um, Betsy, your hand's still up, but I will read the, the public comment information. Persons offering public comment must state their full name and address. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person and must be on subjects not listed on the agenda. Any com comments tonight from anyone? Okay, I don't see any hands or phone numbers, um, but thank you everyone for your time tonight and for voting. I'm sure you did. And- uh, Move to adjourn. All your time. Thanks, Mike. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, everyone, for all of your work. Thank Have you, everyone. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.